I think that that was very clear, but yeah. apparently, yeah. as you know, Uganda right now is a hotbed on that specific issue, yeah. with the mayoral issue, yeah. because a lot of people feel that, uh, to some degree, that Elias Lukwago was unfairly treated, yeah. and to some degree, because he did not align with the party mm -hmm. that's in, in charge, mm -hmm. was sidelined due to party disagreements as opposed to the work that he and the service that he was able That's to give Kampala. That's not true. That is not true. Much as I wouldn't want to waste your time to justify all That's that. That's right. But I can give you the picture. Point number one, the people of Kampala, there are those who follow the political happenings. There are those who have known sides for government against the government, for the opposition against the opposition. But there are people, and perhaps the majority, who have no business with all of those you know, quarrels and whatever, but all they want is to drive in a pothole free city who are not going to be stuck like after a heavy downpour, who want, who want a well-networked city with the entire sewage system around. And we felt, as government, we had got a hard-working team of managers headed by one Jennifer Musisi, who were doing their work, but were only being let down by the political leadership. It was not a question of politics. You remember when that lady came to office, she took on everybody who was on the wrong side of the law, be it movement and be it NRM. And, and honestly, credit should be given where it is due. She took on an army general who was a coordinator of intelligence services. Threw him out of the house he wanted to take for personal use. Okay? Everybody applauded Jennifer, including Elias Lukwago. She went down, she had trouble with the, uh, the chairman center of Kampala. A very good movement, Kada, Nyakano. The opposition clapped for her, okay? When it came to disagreeing with Lukwago, they condemned her. She now became a Museveniist. So when I came to this office, and look at what has been achieved in Kampala. Put aside the issue of the mayor. New roads are constructed. That's not a small issue. Plants are coming up. The green is being resurrected. Allow me to finish that point. Kampala is having a hope of being a job hub, of being a, uh, uh, name it. But of course, it so happens that we have a culture in Uganda, and perhaps in the world, that what is progressive and good is not necessarily what is popular for our media. Now, the debate now is more on the political quarrels. Let's get there. So when I come, I come decided. I say, for me, I can hear anybody, discuss with anybody, agree or disagree, but I will not compromise on any politicking of any form that will paralyze the work in the city. You heard, for example, last year people saying, don't pass the budget of KCCA because the road mayor is out of office. What did that one imply? Okay, your city would be Rotting, garbage would be here. When the KCC attempted to close for one day last year because of threats on our frontline staff, downtown Kampara was becoming a no-go area within three hours. Okay? So, this can now come to your, the Rukwago factor. I come to office. I find a quarrel between the Lord Mayor and the councillors. There is a law that governs them. And the executive director. And the executive director. There is a law. Somehow you, 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 you believe sense will prevail, logic will prevail. But so what's the problem? The role of the mayor is to call meetings. The role of the ED is to give technical advice. But in one way or another, the ED will tell you, my advice has been ignored. Tomorrow they will tell you, council has been called, but the mayor has refused to table uh, proposals for budget. So what you're saying is yes. as, as the head of this you know, Kampala Capital City Authority. You took a definitive stand yes. according to the act yes. and the guidelines of the act. For oh, sure. And followed the act. Yes. This was not a political move. For oh, sure. And it was not a personal attack. First of all, the constitution, I think Article 5, Clause 4, uh, they call it Clause for the Constitution, Article 5, yes, Clause 4. The constitution, which is the first supreme law, gives the responsibility of administering the Kampala to the central government, which I serve. Right. And it provides for a subordinate law which gives delegated authority to the elected leaders and management. So first and foremost, the primary responsibility 
okay, to, look, to, to run Kampala effectively and efficiently is in central government. You remember when there was the debate that the president should take over Kampala. The lawyers came up, and rightly so, and they were challenging us and saying, the proposal had come from parliament. So they were challenging us and saying, president taking over Kampala, how many times will he take over? Because the constitution gives him the responsibility. So I come in determined to make sure I don't want paralysis. But you find a situation, for example, a meeting for the authority to approve revenue rates for the city and is the not convened. The mayor and that's the, the work of the mayor. You find so many other people are in office for two years, okay? No business is going on. People are being paid salaries. You ask why? Now, and you receive a petition against somebody who is supposed to do this and that. The law clearly spells out how you should handle that peti uh, petition. My brother Elias of Guagu went to court to challenge the tribunal. He personally said I had acted illegally. He actually said I had acted unconstitutional. You know, he's a good lawyer, so he knows how to claim for his rights. He lost all of those appeal uh, petitions before Justice Zehuri Kirize, before Justice Mwangusha, another one was withdrawn, okay? I think the only case now he's sustaining is the one before uh, Justice Yang. So you believe he's having a hard time accepting the final rule, and these yes. appeals are just, you know, clutching at straws, so to speak. Well, I don't want to talk about cases in court. Yeah. I want to be very clear, but I'm telling you, petitions he took to court and which were thrown out. For example, he wanted the tribunal disbanded. The judge ruled, it's in black and white, it's on record, that the minister had power and was right to form the tribunal. Well, let's move on from Elias Lukwago because, you know, the, the reason... But it's important for the people of Kampala to know yeah. that we're not just in a personal, emotional way. We are just here to say that even if you are mayor who is an RM, it doesn't matter. Even if you are who who opposition or not opposition. We have opposition people in parliament. We work with them. We have opposition LOC five chairperson with councils dominated by NRM councillors. They work with government. The point is, politicking should have a limit. Service delivery, development, which is bipartisan, should not be stifled. Well, while we're on the subject, do you, do you then believe that the, the manner in which the councillors were removed from the meeting, in which you, you made the final decision to impeach Mayor Lukwago at the time, and the manner in which that they were handled was the right manner. Yes, you, you, you should explain it. You're, the good thing you have these pictures. A meeting was convened in accordance with the provision of the law. After receiving a tribunal report, I convened the meeting. I called all, including Lukwago, to come to the meeting. Okay, they were pro Rukwago councillors there, that's why they voted against the motion, they were those against the motion. So, one individual stands up on top of the desk, throws himself down, or in the name of interrupting a meeting. Honestly. So, should we just watch? For fortunately, I never lost my cool, I was there. And the meeting had to proceed. He had to be ejected out of the chamber. If you become a nuisance, it's everywhere in the world. Why should you, why should you disorganize uh, a law for uh, meetings? As a, as a public, we want to move on from the issue. And, uh, you know, it, it is sad because for the first time we've seen a mayor impeached. Yes. And we want a mayor for the... For the it's actually not sad. It's actually good for our democracy, okay? That leaders should be accountable, okay? That politics should not take the first place, but development which, which caters for the needs of those we aspire and lead, we aspire to lead should come up. We shouldn't go and fight, for example, in parliament, fight each other and paralyze the budget and deny water to the people of Kamwen. Otherwise, we should all be thrown out, irrespective of which political party you serve, okay? Yes. Yes. All right, uh, moving on from Lukwago, you know, you, you have said in the press, quote, I've endured harsh judgments, yes. hateful attacks, yes. physical intimidation, yes. and insults, and even teeth attempts aimed at my children. Mm. What makes all of this worth it? That happened uh, during that, uh, that uh, yes. yes, 
You see, we have a situation where people want to turn things emotional. People want to, be, to, want to accept to be ruled by sentiment as opposed to logic and fact, okay? I am a minister for Kampala. Section 12 of the KCC Act commanded me as a minister that you receive a petition, you present it to Attorney General, you present it to Chief Justice. If all of those agree with you, you form a tribunal. After the tribunal, you call a meeting. So if I have done that, a statutory obligation imposed on me by the law, which law was made in Parliament, that Rukwagosat and Katuntu and others, why should you aim at me? Why should you aim at my children? That makes you chief. And I stand out to say, hey, I want to be intimidated. I am firm to go and intimidate cowards. So long as I believe that what I am doing is right, you won't intimidate me. I will stand up against that.